look around, you see both living and non-living things. You must have understand and ask yourself, what is that make an organism living? Or what is it that an inanimate thing does not have, which a living thing has? The answer to this is the presence of the basic unit of life, the cell, in all living organisms. All organisms are composed of cell. Some are composed of single cell and are called unicellular organism, while other like us composed of many cells are called multicellular organism. Para contain important points. All organisms are composed of cell. Single cell called unicellular organism. Multicellular are called multicellular organism. What is a cell? Unicellular organisms are capable of first independent existence and second performing the essential function of a life. Anything less than a complete structure of a cell does not ensure independent living. Hence, cell is the fundamental structural and functional unit of all living organisms. Anton von Leon Hook first saw and described a living cell. Robert Brown later discovered the nucleus. The even invention of microscope and its improvement leading to the electron microscope revealed all the structural detail of the cell. Para contain important points. Unicellular organisms are capable of first independent existence and second, performing the essential function of a life. Anything less than a complete structure of a cell does not ensure independent living. Cell is the fundamental structural and functional unit of all living organisms. Anton von Leon Hook saw, first saw and described a living cell. Robert Brown later discovered a nucleus. Cell theory. In 1838, Matthias Swellenden, a German botanist, examined a large number of plants and observed that all plants are composed of different kinds of cells which form the tissue of the plant. At about the same time, Theodore Swan, 1839, a British zoologist, studied different types of animal cells and reported that cell had a thin outer layer which is today known as the plasma membrane. He also concluded, based on these studies on plant tissue, that the presence of cell wall is a unique character of the plant cell. On the basis of this, Swan proposed the hypothesis that the bodies of animals and plants are composed of cells and products of the cell. Para contain important points. 1838, Mithis Swellenden, a German botanist, observed that all plants are composed of different kinds of cell which form the tissue of the plant. Theodore Swan, 1839, a British zoologist, study different types of animal and report that cell made a thin outer layer which is today known as plasma membrane. Plant tissue presence of cell wall in a unique character of the plant cells. Swan proposed the hypothesis that the bodies of animal and plant are composed of cell and products of cell. Swellenden and Swan together formulate the cell theory. This theory, however, did not explain as to how new cells were formed. Rudolf Virchow, 1855, first explained that cells divided and new cells are formed from pre-existing cells, omen cellula, e cellula. He modified the hypothesis of Swellenden and Swan to give the cell theory a final shape. Cell theory as understood today is first a living organism are composed of cell and products of cell. Second, all cell arise from pre-existing cell. Para contain important point. Swellenden and Swan together formulate the cell theory but did not explain as to how new cell were formed. Rudolf Virchow, 1855 first explained that cell divides and new cell are formed from pre-existing cell. Omen cellula e cellula. Modification modified cell theory. First, all living organisms are composed of cell and products of cell. 
second all cell arise from pre existing cells an overview of a cell you have earlier observed cell in an onion peel and or human cheek cell under the microscopes let us recollect their structure the onion cell which is a typical plant cell has a distinct cell wall as its outer boundaries and just within it is the cell membrane the cell of the human cheek have an outer membrane as the delimiting structure of the cell inside each cell is a dense membrane bound structure called nucleus this nucleus contain the chromosomes which in turn contain the genetic material dna cell that have membrane bound nuclei are called eukaryotic whereas cell that lack a membrane bound nuclei are prokaryotic in both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells a semi fluid matrix called cytoplasm occupies the volume of the cell the cytoplasm is the main arena of cellular activities in both plants and animal cells various chemical reaction occur in it to keep the cell in the living state para contain important point each cell in a dense membrane boundary structure called nucleus nucleus contain chromosome it is a genetic material called dna cell that have membrane bound nuclei are called eukaryotic whereas cell that lack membrane bound nucleus are called prokaryotic both contain semi fluid matrix called cytoplasm occupies the volume of the cell cytoplasm is the main arena of cellular activities in both plants and animal cells chemical reaction occur in it to keep cell in the living state besides the nucleus eukaryotic cell have other membrane bound distinct structure called organelles like the endoplasmic reticulum er the golgi complex lysosomes mitochondria microbodies and vacuoles the prokaryotic cell lacks such membrane bound organelles ribosomes are non membrane bound organelles found in all cell both eukaryotic as well as prokaryotic within the cell ribosomes are found not only in the cytoplasm but also within the two organelle chloroplast in plants and mitochondria and on rough endoplasmic reticulum animal cell contain another non membrane bound organelle called centrosome which helps in cell division para contain important point whole para is important animal cell contain another non membrane bound organelle and centrosome which helps in cell division cells differ greatly in size shape and activities for example mycoplasma the smallest cell are only 0.3 micrometer in length while bacteria could be 3 to 5 micrometer the largest isolated single cell is the egg of an ostrich almost among multicellular organisms human red blood cells are about 7 micrometer in diameter nerve cells are some of the la- longest cell cell also vary greatly in in their shape they may be disk like polygonal columnar cuboid thread like or even irregular the shape of the cell may vary with the function they perform important point in the para whole para is important figure 8.1 diagram showing different shape of the cells first red blood cell round and biconcave white blood cell amoeboid columnar epithelial cell long and narrow nerve cell branch and long tracheids elongated mesophyll cell round and oval the prokaryotic cell are represented by bacteria blue green algae mycoplasma and pplo pleuronemonia like organism they are generally smaller and multiply more rapidly than the eukaryotic cells figure 8.2 they may vary greatly in shape and size the base the four basic shapes of the bacteria are bicon bacillus rod like coccus spiral vibrio comma shape and spirulum spiral 
para contains important point whole para is important the organization of prokaryotic cell is fundamentally similar even though prokaryotes exhibit a wide variety of shape and function all prokaryotes have a cell wall surrounded surrounding the cell membrane except in mycoplasma the fluid matrix filled the cell is the cytoplasm there is no well defined nucleus the genetic material is basically naked not evolved by a nuclear membrane in addition to the generic dna the single chromosome or circular dna many bacteria have small circular dna outside the genomic dna these smaller dna are called plasmid the plasmid dna confer certain unique phenotypic character to such bacteria one such character is res- resistance to antibiotics in higher classes you will learn that this plasmid dna is used to monitor bacterial transformations with the foreign dna nuclear membrane is found in eukaryotes no organelles like the ones in the eukaryotes are found in prokaryotic cells except from ribosomes prokaryotes have something unique in the form of inclusions a specialized dif- a, spe- a specialized differentiated form of cell membrane called mesosomes in the characteristic of prokaryotes they are essentially enfolded of the cell membrane para contain important points the um, prokaryotic cell represent bacteria para contain important points the organized The organization of the prokaryotic cell is fundamentally similar even the prokaryotes exhibit a wide variety of shapes and function all prokaryotes have cell wall surround surrounding the cell membrane except the mycoplasma no well defined nucleus generic material basically nuclear not evolved by a nuclear membrane genomic dna single chromosome or circular dna many bacteria have small circular dna outside the genomic dna called as plasmid plasmid dna confer certain unique phenotypic character to such bacteria character is resistance to antibiotics plasmid dna is used to monitor bacterial transformations with a foreign dna no organelles are found in prokaryotic cell except form ribosomes prokaryotes have something unique in the form of inclusions a specialized differentiated form of cell membrane called mesosome is the characteristic of prokaryotes they are essentially enfolded in the cell membrane figure 8.2 diagram showing comparison of eukaryotic cells with other organism a typical eukaryotic cell 10 to 20 micrometer typical bacteria 1 to 2 micrometer pplo about 0.1 micrometer viruses 0.02 to 0.2 micrometer cell envelope and its modification most prokaryotic cell partially the bacterial cell have a chemical complex cell envelope the cell envelope consists of tightly bound three layer structure it means the outermost glycocalyx followed by the cell wall and then the plasma membrane all the each layer of the envelope perform distinct function they act together as a single protective unit bacteria can be classified into two groups on the basis of difference in the cell envelope and the manner in which they responds to the staining procedure developed by gram those those that take up the gram stain are gram positive and the other that did not are gram negative bacteria para contain important points mostly prokaryotes have a chemical complex cell envelope cell envelope tightly bounded three layered structure outer glycocalyx followed by cell wall then plasma membrane each layer of envelope perform distinct function they together act as a single protective unit two groups based on the difference in the cell envelope respond to the staining produ- procedure developed by gram 
take up gram stain uh, gram positive and other that do not are called gram negative bacteria glycocalyx differ in the composition and thickness among different bacteria it could be loose sheet called as slim slim layer in some while in other it may be thick and tough called as capsule the cell wall determines the shape of the cell and provide a structure support structural support to prevent the bacterium from bursting and collapsing whole para is important plasma membrane is selectively permeable in nature and interact with the outer world outside the world this membrane is similar structurally to that of eukaryotes important point a special membrane structure is the mesosome which is formed by extension of plasma membrane into the cell these extension are in the form of vesicles tubules and lamella they help in the cell wall formation dna replication and distribution of daughter cells they also helps in respiration secretion processes to increase the surface area of the plasma membrane and enzymatic content in some prokaryotes like cyanobacteria there are other membrane extensions into the cytoplasm called chromatophore which contain pigment whole para is important bacteria bacterial cell may be motile or non motile if motile they have thin filamentous extensions from their cell wall called flagella bacteria show a rigid in the arrange in the number and arrangement of flagella bacterial flagella is composed of three parts filament hook and vessel body the filament is a longer portion and extend from the cell surface to the outside beside flagella pili and fimbri are also surface structure of the bacteria but did not play any role in mortality the pili are elongated tube structure made up of spherical protein the fimbri are smaller bristles like mm, fibers sprouting out of the cell in some bacteria they are known to help attach the bacteria to rocks in streams and also to the host tissue whole para is important ribosomes and inclusion bodies in prokaryotes ribosomes are associated with the plasma membrane of the cell they are about 15 nanometer by 20 nanometer in size and are made up of two subunit 15s and 30s units which then prevent together from 70s prokaryotic ribosomes ribosomes are the site of protein synthesis several ribosomes may attach to a single mrna and form a chain called polyribosomes or polysomes the ribosomes of a polysomes translates the mrna into protein all para is important inclusion bodies reverse material in the prokaryotic cells are stored in the cytoplasm in the form of inclusion bodies these are not bound by any membrane system and lie free in the cytoplasm example phosphate granules cyanofacian granules and glycogen granules gas vacuoles are found in blue green algae purple and green photosynthetic bacteria whole para is important eukaryotic cells the eukaryotes include all the protist plant animals and fungi in eukaryotic cell there is an extensive compartmentization of cytoplasm though the presence of membrane bound organelles eukaryotic cell possesses an organized nucleus with a nuclear envelope in addition eukaryotic cells have a variety of complex lo- locomotory and cytoskeletal structure their generic material is organized into chromosome whole para is important all eukaryotic cells are not identical plants and animal cell are different as they form 
possesses cell wall, plasmids, and a large central vacuole, which are absent in animal cells. On the other hand, animal cells have centrioles, which are absent in almost all plant cells. Whole para is important. Figure 8.3 A. Plant B. Animal cell You must have to overlook both the diagrams. Let us now look at the individual cell organelles to understand their structure of the function. Cell membrane. The detailed structure of the membrane was studied only after the advent of the electron microscope in the 1950s. Meanwhile, the chemical studies of cell membrane, especially in human red blood cells, RBCs, enabled the scientists to detect the possible structure of plasma membrane. These studies showed that all cell membrane is mainly composed of lipid and proteins. The major lipid are phospholipid that are arranged in a bilayer. Also, the lipids are arranged within the membrane with the polar head toward the outside and the hydrophobic tail toward the inner part. These ensure that the non-membrane tail of saturated hydrocarbon is protected from aquatic environment. Figure 8.4 In addition to phospholipid, membrane also contain chlorophyll. Sorry, sorry, cholesterol. Whole para is important. Later, microbiochemical investigation clearly revealed that all the cell membrane also possess protein and carbohydrate. The ratio of protein and lipid varies considerably in different cell types. The human being, the membrane in human being, the membrane of the erythrocytes has approximately 52% protein and 40% lipids. Depending on the ESA of extraction, the membrane protein can be classified as in Integral and peripherally, the peripheral protein lie on the surface of membrane while the integral protein are partially or totally buried in the membrane. Figure 8.4 Fluid Mosaic Plasma Membrane You have to over, overview once at the time. An improved model of the structure of cell membrane was proposed by Singer and Nicholson, 1972, widely accepted as fluid mosaic model, 18, figure 8.4. According to this, the quasi-fluid nature of lipid enabled laterally movement of protein while in the overall bilayer. This ability to move within the membrane is measured as its fluidity. The fluid nature of membrane is also important from the point of view of function like cell growth, formation of intercellular junctions, secretion and endocytosis, cell division ETC. One of the most important function of plasma membrane is the transport of cell membrane across it. The membrane is selectively permeable or to some molecules present on either side of it. Many molecules can move briefly across the membrane within any requirement of energy and this is called as passive transport. Neutral solutes may move across the membrane by the press process of simple diffusion along the concentration gradient. It means from higher concentration to lower. Water may also move across these membrane from higher to lower concentration. Movement of water by diffusion is called osmosis as the polar molecules cannot pass through the nonpolar lipid bilayers. 
they required a carrier protein of the membrane to filtrate their transport across the membrane a few ions or molecules are transported across the membrane against their concentration gradient it means from high from lower to higher concentration such a transport is an energy depending process in which atp is utilized and it's called 